I want to start then. So uh, this is, uh, I'm presenting a work that we uh, published in uh, ICC 2016, last year. And this is a joint work with uh, Dr. Shimizu and Dr. Bansal from uh, Toyota Info Technology and my supervisor, Dr. Robert Heath. So the title is Beam, uh, beam Design for Beam Switching Based Millimeter Vehicle, vehicle to Infrastructure Communications. So uh, there's a lot of uh, traffic accidents around the world and especially in, in the U.S. There's a lot of, for example, uh, there are more than 6 million crashes per year and the total number of fatalities is uh, staggering. It's more than uh, 35,000 uh, fatalities per year. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, development in the, in the automotive industry to try to use communications to help uh, reduce this uh, number of crashes. And those communication can happen between car to car or car to infrastructure or car to the internet, to the cloud that could provide uh, different services that could help uh, reduce uh, these uh, accidents. So uh, the, the goal of the communication is to try to uh, have uh, short latency link, connect, uh, link connections and have the high enough data rate to support the different applications. And uh, this is the main goal uh, of our work as well. So there have been uh, uh, kind of the de facto standards for vehicular communications, what is uh, typically known as the dedicated short-end communications, uh, short for DSRC. Uh, and uh, this is a kind of an ad hoc network that has been developed from the IEEE uh, AGO 2.11 family. Uh, specifically, it's uh, developed from AGO 2.11a. And uh, there also have been the uh, map layer that has been defined uh, for these standards, which is typically known as BRUV. Uh, this, this is uh, a mature standard. It has been developed since 1999. And uh, it, uh, it has been uh, researched and field tested for years. And there has been speculation that it will be deployed in the next few years, maybe in uh, around 2020 timeline. Uh, there are, uh, recently, there's a lot of interest in uh, automated driving, and uh, there have been a lot of reports that we need a lot of sensors to uh, enable this type of uh, automated uh, driving applications. For example, there has been a report on, in an article on, on the web that say that a Google car can generate up to 750 megabytes per second, and uh, there's a lot of other uh, uh, this uh, similar application that report a structuring number of uh, data rates that have to be uh, that that have been generated by the uh, aut automated cars, and because of these many sensors have generated a lot of uh, this data, we need if we want to share this uh, information, we have to have a very uh, high data rate uh, communications, and that cannot be supported with the current DSRC standards. We can support only up to around. 6 mega BPS that have been uh, shown by field test. So what can we use this uh, uh, communication for? So we can use it to help in kind of a flexible sensor type that is uh, unlike any other specific type of sensor such as the camera that can only see, uh, that can only have a visual image. Uh, V2V communication can provide this kind of uh, soft uh, sensor type that can uh, take a role of different types of sensors. So in this, we can help to get like a long, long range sensing. That means if we have a base station that can relay some of the information from further uh, area or further road ahead, we can sense uh, fine to the uh, into the the direction that we want that that the car is heading, and it can also help in non line of sight scenarios. Where, for example, at the intersection, that uh, a car cannot see the the approaching car in the crossing intersection, and it could also help in uh, collaborative driving, so that different vehicles can share their uh, perspective of the sensing environment, so that they can uh, work together and try to have a more uh, effective and crash-free uh, 
transportations. So one of the, uh, as uh, our paper is focused on millimeter wave, so one question is why do we want to use millimeter wave? So the obvious answer is that there's a lot of spectrum in these bands, as shown here by, the, uh, by these uh, blue, blue, uh, blue rectangles here. These are the bands that are available at the millimeter wave frequencies. And, uh, and uh, it had been, uh, it's, it's the, 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 the reason that it is uh, a focus recently is because the CMOS technology has catch up and right now it's possible to produce uh, millimeter wave devices that are cheap and reliable. And as, uh, as evidence of that, there have been a development of the new 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi standards that, are, that is already on the market. However, it's not without challenge. There's a lot of uh, challenge using millimeter wave because of the, its uh, channel characteristics. It uh, has, uh, the, the, the antenna is shrinking because of the uh, high frequencies. And this means that we need to use uh, a large antenna arrays to compensate for the path loss. And to do that, we need to know the exact point in directions. Otherwise, we cannot achieve the, the gain that needed to overcome the path loss. And there have been a lot of uh, research in trying to efficiently doing beam alignment for, for this uh, to enable millimeter wave link connections. But uh, conventional method have been uh, designed for static operations. And this is what, uh, what is used in the standard uh, IEEE AO 2.11 AD. And uh, it's a robust uh, method. It does not have any much assumptions, but the problem is that it takes too much time to, to do the beam alignment. And our goal is to try to support uh, vehicular mobilities in a very fast changing environment. And we also want to exploit uh, a lot of sensors that are, is, that, that are available on the vehicle. For example, a GPS that can give positions and potentially maybe DSRC that can help in uh, providing control channel. So this is the, the motivations of our work. So with that, we propose to use uh, a what we call the beam switching based approach that try to leverage the, uh, the two sensors that I just mentioned, that is GPS and DSRC. So what we assume here is that GPS can provide us uh, position information and speed information that can be used to predict the locations of the vehicle. For example, as shown, as illustrated here, for example, at time T0, this car want to have a connection with the, uh, the roadside unit. It should use the DSRC to transmit its positions and the speed to the roadside unit with the request to, to, to connect uh, via uh, millimeter wave communications. So with that, uh, the roadside unit can uh, know the current positions of the car. And in this case, for example, if it is here, it should activate these green beams that is pointing towards the vehicle, if assuming that we have line of sight. And uh, by having positions and speed, the roadside unit is also, can also uh, predict the future locations of this vehicle if we have uh, accurate enough position, uh, speed position, uh, speed information. And for example, assuming at time T1, if the car move, moves to these uh, positions and uh, the prediction tells that the car is here, then the roadside unit should switch to this uh, yellow beams that is pointing around this area. So uh, in this work, we want to, uh, to derive, uh, to, to to show the optimal beam width that should be used for all these different beams so that uh, we can optimize the total amount of data rates that can be uh, transmitted to the vehicle if a vehicle pass through the entire range of this uh, roadside unit coverage. So first we start with the mobility model. This we assume uh, an uncrowded highway, uh, two lane highways. That means uh, it's very likely that we have line of sight and because of the uncrowdedness, we can assume that the uh, traffic is in what is called the free, free flow traffic conditions, meaning that uh, the speed is relatively constant. And so we can expect that there will be a relatively low uh, speed variation during the uh, entire coverage of the roadside unit. And uh, we, we assume as 
we assume that, that the speed uh, that is uh, reported to the roadside unit has some uh, addictive errors. We, that is this uh, shown by this DE here, which is, uh, which is assumed to follow a Gaussian distribution with some uh, with zero mean and some variance, uh, sigma v square. And uh, the position is just estimated because right now we assume that the speed is constant, so we just a linear model to uh, estimate the position of the vehicle. So the, the main point of this, uh, so this one is show the main idea of how do we compute the rate when assuming that we have a certain beam design. So in this illustration, I have three beams, beam one, two, three here, and they have some overlaps. So that this overlap can be used to, uh, to help mitigate the effect of the position error. So that uh, if, for example, if, if the vehicle is, uh, so this kind of give some uh, some space to absorb the position error when you switch. So as long as we switch during, uh, around this area, there will be no uh, outage. So if the uh, position estimation error is within this range, we don't have any problem. So the main idea to compute this is to try to figure out, figure out when we have the, uh, when the beam is aligned and when it is not aligned. And that really depends on the uh, speed error, whether it's positive or negative, to help us uh, kind of separate the cases that needed to compute the uh, total amount of data rate. For example, in this uh, here, in the case that the, the speed estimation is positive, that means we, uh, expect, uh, we, we, estimate the, we estimate the speed to be higher than it, it actually is. Uh, in that case, we will switch the beam too fast. And that, if it is too fast, that it's beyond the uh, absorption of the overlapping area, for example, at around this B1 over V hat here, that is outside the overlapping region, we will have some uh, area that is, uh, there's some area that is uh, misaligned, and that we don't have, uh, we cannot receive any signal around here. So in that case, we should compute the uh, data rate from this T0 to this B1 hat, and then we should start the next beam from this position. It's not from B1 over V hat, but it's from this B2, uh, B here. Yeah, and just the one last thing that I should mention is that if the speed estimation is too, that the error is too large, it could happen that this B1 over V hat could, uh, could, could move past this T0 in that case we should stop at around t uh, at, at the point T0. That means we don't have negative rates, and that just the the uh, that is the the, the caveat that we need to keep in mind when computing the the uh, average rate over the uh, p the speed error. So with that, I uh, kind of give a sketch of what we computed here. We use the Shannon rate capacity to compute the rate. Uh, this uh, PRX here is the instantaneous receive uh, signal, uh, receive power at time t, and uh, when we use this beam uh, theta b, and and this uh, uh, and this uh, receive power is used. We use uh, a, a link budget model for doing that. It's not uh, it does not include uh, fading, but it's just uh, a path loss information. And then we do uh, the, uh, the average. So this di here is the total amount of data rates. That means the, uh, the integrations of the, this uh, log, log uh, capacity formula over the range that the beam are aligned for all the beam pair, uh, for all the beams in, in the coverage. For example, here, beam one, two, three, that, that means this di is the total amount of data that is received for all these different beams. And, uh, and this have to be uh, average over the, uh, have to be uh, average out over the expected, uh, the, the, the speed error, which is V here, which is assumed to be a uh, Gaussian. And that is the final uh, metric that we use. So we want to optimize the beam, as I mentioned before. So that means we want to optimize this theta from one to n, which is the beam width of all the different beams that cover the coverage of the roadside unit. 
And uh, we did some uh, simplification to optimize uh, for this optimization to make the problem tractable. So one of the optimization is uh, uh, one of the relaxation is we assume that the speed error is can be ignored. That means we don't have to do this uh, this uh, expectation here, doing this averaging over VE here. So we can just uh, maximize the uh, total amount of data rates di uh, the, the sum of di directly. And we also assume that there is no overlap. The reason for this is that, uh, as shown later, the effect of overlap is kind of marginal compared to the other effect. And this is the the, the problem that have we have relaxed. So uh, the constraint here, we have two constraints here. One is that all the sum of the beams, sum of the beam width should cover all the entire coverage of the uh, roadside unit, and that each beams is positive, uh, each beam is positive. So uh, the the optitude function here, di, the sum of di here is not uh, a convex function, so we cannot compute the uh, the the optimal uh, solutions directly. So we use uh, gradient descent uh, to to numerically compute the uh, solve the optimization problem. So the reason that, so we, we want to provide here some of the uh, empirical evidence why we can use the gradient descent and that it will not stuck in a local optimum. Uh, we have uh, empirically uh, plotted here for n, the number of beams equal to two and the beam equal to three, and just want to show that uh, the, the behavior of the, uh, the, fun the objective function here is kind of regular so and there's no that we don't see any uh, uh, local optimas that we uh, that 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 the gradient descent method can stop. So we expect that uh, gradient descent will provide uh, a good enough solution for this problem. And uh, I show here is the uh, plot of the solutions of the the total amount of data rates when we use this uh, gradient descent optimization and another one that we propose, we, we call it uh, equal coverage beam designs, which means that we, uh, com we, we compute, uh, we allocate the beam width to each of these beams so that the projections onto the road has the same length. And uh, that's a very simple design, and, in, and it show here is that it's very close to the optimal. And actually, it's not, you cannot see it here, we have to uh, mark, uh, Magnify it is shown here from around uh, n from two to five. Even with this magnif magnification, we can see that from around five, there's practically no difference between the uh, the total amount of data that can be achieved. So this 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 is one of the main results that we can achieve a very close optimal uh, beam design with a very simple design as uh, what we call the equal coverage beam design here. So finally, I show some uh, numerical uh, results to, see, to show the, 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 the effect of the overlap. And I will show here the rate and the uh, outage. So some of the main parameters are shown here. So we assume a 60 giga gigahertz carrier frequencies. We assume 2.16 gigahertz bandwidth. These are the from 11 AD uh, parameters. We assume the roadside unit has coverage of 100 meters, and the height of the roadside unit is around seven meters. And we assume a, a, an EIRP of 20 dBm. So the plot here we show here is the outage. The, the plot on the, on the left is outage versus the overlap ratio, and on the right is the average rate versus the overlap ratio. And we compare two beam uh, design here. What one is the equal coverage beam design, which we have shown previously to have a uh, very good, uh, that's almost achieved the optimal beam design. And another one is what we call the equal beam width beam design, meaning that we just use the same beam width for all these different beams. So, so the outage here is defined as the time that uh, the beam is not aligned. And this is just basically the total uh, percentage of time when the vehicle passes through the roadside uh, unit coverage, uh, what is the percentage of time that it is misaligned? 
So as shown here, we show, I show here for a different number of beams from 10 to 40. And uh, we can see that when we increase the number of beams, the outage will increase. This is because uh, the, the beam, the, the larger the number of beams, the smaller the coverage area, meaning that it, it cannot tolerate uh, a large amount of position here. And similarly, when we, incre uh, when we increase the overlap ratio, that means we increase the amount of, uh, of capacity that we can use to, to uh, absorb the position errors. That means we can have lower average, uh, lower outage. And, and for, the, uh, for the average rate, by increasing the overlap ratio, meaning that we have to widen the beams, so that means the gain will, uh, will be smaller, and that means we have a little, uh, the, the rate will, will get, uh, will decrease. And as we can see here, the rate can will decrease, but it's not decreases that much. For example, here for this are 40 beams. When we use 40 beams, uh, overlap ratio of 0 0.1 to increase to 0 0.9, the difference will be less than 10%. And, uh, and one point that we would like to make here is that the uh, beam design does matter. And uh, as you can see here, for example, consider the, uh, the 40 beams. When we use 40 beams with the equal coverage beam design, it can achieve around 2% uh, outage. And, uh, and it can achieve the, the average rate of around 12 gigabps. And if we use the same number of beams with uh, the equal uh, beam width beam design, we get only around uh, 8 gigabps. That means we lost uh, about half the, uh, the, the, the data rates. Or otherwise, we can say that the equal uh, coverage beam design can achieve around 1.5x gain over this uh, equal beam width beam design. So as a conclusion, just the summaries of what we, we did here. Uh, we have shown that uh, we one of the uh, millimeter wave is, has a, a good, uh, has high potential in realizing uh, that high data rates communication that will help in the future automatic driving applications. And we show here that the core coverage beam design, which is a very simple design, is near optimal. And we also show the effect of uh, overlaps uh, of, the, uh, of the beams on the average rate and outage, uh, both uh, outage and average rate decrease if we uh, uh, decrease the, an overlap ratio. Uh, and the uh, equal coverage beam design can achieve up to 1.5x uh, gains in terms of rate over the equal beam with beam design, which means that uh, beam design does matter and we should uh, use the optimal one in this case. Uh, thank you.